Hi, welcome to the show. It's been an exciting development in the physics world. NASA engineer and scientist, Dr. Bueller and his team have actually created propellantless thrust. So that's been something that hasn't existed until now. If true, this will be a huge breakthrough. It could be what actually the UAPs are using because one of the five observables is acceleration, but without any sort of signatures. So basically no visual means of thrust. We don't see any, any dinosaurs coming out the back of anything. Even in space, you have ion thrusters. They actually expel ions. So there's always been some sort of propellant. Everything we know about thrust so far is that you have to expel something. So it's force equals MA and every reaction requires an opposite reaction. So that means you have to shoot something out the back. Chris Lado, welcome to Lado Files. This comes from the debrief by Christopher Plain. NASA veterans propellantless propulsion drive, the physics says shouldn't work, just produced enough thrust to overcome Earth's gravity. This is Charles Bueller. He was actually on Tim Ventura's show. Tim Ventura is also mentioned for his APEC program that he's been a part of for several years now. And it sounds like they may have made a breakthrough. So very exciting. Well, let me start out with the big news. Your team has built and patented a new type of propulsion device that is currently producing over one earth gravity of force, uses no propellant, and in careful testing in hard vacuum, it indicates that the force generated is not based on known effects, such as ion, wind, or conventional electrostatic forces. So do you have kind of a short elevator pitch description that you can give us for what this is and how it works? Uh, sure. <clears throat> Essentially, what we've discovered is that um, systems that contained an asymmetry in either electrostatic pressure or some kind of electrostatic um, divergent field can give a system of a center of mass a non-zero force component. So what that basically means is that <clears throat> there is some underlying physics that can essentially place a force on an object should those two constraints be met. So um, technically those terms are called asymmetrical capacitors that have been around for quite a, a while, would fall in that category, but there are other types that would fall into those into that category. So that's ah. it. So Dr. Charles Bueller, a NASA engineer and co-founder of Exodus Propulsion Technologies has revealed that his company's propellantless propulsion drive, which appears to defy the known laws of physics, has produced enough thrust to counteract Earth's gravity. That means they have one G of force at least, which is amazing without any sort of propellants. Bueller's worked on the Space Shuttle, International Space Station, the Hubble Telescope, and the current NASA dust program. His colleagues believe their discovery of a fundamental new force, fundamental new force represents a historic breakthrough that will impact space travel for the next millennium. Bueller told the debrief, the most important message to convey to the public is that a major new discovery occurred. This discovery of a new force is fundamental in that electric fields alone can generate a sustainable force onto an object and allow center of mass translation of said object without expelling mass. These are rules that include conservation of energy, but if done correctly, one can generate forces unlike anything humankind has done before. Bueller added, it will be this force that we will use to pro propel objects for the next 1,000 years until the next thing comes. Bueller says it's no way affiliated with NASA or the US government. He presented his findings at a recent alternate propulsion energy conference. That's what Tim Ventura is a part of. According to the debrief, he's one of NASA's top experts in electrostatics. He oversees the management of electrostatic discharge and ESD safety for the space shuttle ISS and Hubble. Dr. Bueller also established NASA's electrostatics and surface physics laboratory at Kennedy Space Center. He's been looking into this for 25 years. Looks like electrostatics could be a key to unlocking a new force, a new force, propellantless force. Here he is on Tim Ventura's show, link in the description. So let me share that. So in terms of propulsive force, 
you have built several hundred experimental device variations. And between 2014 and 2021, and I think that this graph reflects that, they all produced what appears to be less than one thousandth of an Earth gravity of force. Now that changed in 2021, and you have rapidly increased up to slightly over one G of force. So can you tell me what led to this dramatic increase in propulsive force output? And also, how much farther do you think you might be able to take this using current design technology? Sure. <clears throat> so what we have here, like I said, is a graph of our progress. It doesn't re represent all of the tests, and it certainly doesn't represent all of the models that we've tested. That's numbers close to the thousand. But here's a few select uh, that we put together just to kind of show the highlight of the progress. So from 2016 to 2020, like I said, that was basically, those are basically the conventional asymmetrical capacitors that you'd see in the textbooks um, with a twist, you know, we, we encased them. And I don't think they've ever been encased, uh, you know, in styrofoam to make sure that they didn't leak charge. We definitely did that on purpose and they still worked. So that's kind of what sets us apart from the old T Thomas Brown stuff. A lot of that stuff was in air with tens of thousands of volts. We, we shy away from that. We go to much lower voltage and <clears throat> we try to encapsulate everything. The big advantage, uh, the big uh, jump in 2020, 2021 was a, a few things. Probably the greatest thing that we learned is that there are two types of charges and each type of charge produces a different level of thrust. Um, in electrostatics, there's two types of charges. There's called free charge and there's bound charge. So free charge is what's in a conductor and bound charge is basically what's in an insulator, if you want to be plain about it. Um, and what we discovered is that throughout all of the tests, even back to 2016, 2017, there have been mixtures of both. And we really didn't understand that till the 2020 tests that we performed. And once we understood that, that allowed us to make thrusters uh, optimized to take advantage of the bound charge. So the bound charge, uh, although it pr produces higher thrust, it's a little bit more difficult to, uh, to manipulate because you're dealing with insulators. So, but that's kind of where we're headed now. That's kind of the direction that we're going into now. So now we're moving beyond thin films to more chemical battery-based type of thrusters where we actually can inject these charges directly. So it, it, now just to ask, free charges, that would be kind of like electrons that are traveling in a wire, right? And bound yep. charges would be electrons that are actually in an atom and they can't go anywhere. Well, they'd be in a dielectric medium. So they're oh, you know, okay. they're embedded in a plastic or a epoxy or a... <clears throat> Kevlar, any kind of insulator. Oh, okay. Styrofoam. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so those well, are real charges too. Those are bound charges. How far do you think you could take this with current technology in terms of gravities? And and if again, hypothetically speaking, if NASA handed you a blank check and said, you know what, do as much as you can. How far do you think that this could go with like the latest and greatest in terms of you know material and electronic components? No, I, I think it can go quite far, um, to be honest. Right now, as I said, we're dealing with the the battery world, so the chemical versions of these things. They're no longer thin films. They're basically liquids, essentially, that are applied to surfaces. So they're they're basically crappy batteries. And we're, we're trying to optimize the chemistry to optimize the charge injection. And once we do that and apply our fields, we'll see our force. So <clears throat> that's why the force keeps getting higher and higher. Um, because we are more microscopic. And as we become more microscopic, the mass of our system goes way down and our thrust stays pretty high. So the devices are still small, weighing somewhere between 30 to 40 grams on their own without the attached test equipment, but they were producing enough thrust to counteract the full force of one Earth gravity. The question will be, can they actually use it in space? Because that would mean that, yeah, it's definitely not any other interactions with the air, et cetera. And supposedly they have built a vacuum chamber and tested that. Essentially what we've discovered is that systems that contain an asymmetry in either electrostatic pressure or some kind of electrostatic divergent field can give a system of a center of mass a non-zero force component. So what that basically means is that, is that there's some underlying physics that can essentially place force on an object should those two constraints be met. Okay, so this is actually the patent you see here, Charles Bueller 
system and method for generating forces using asymmetrical electrostatic pressure. From the abstract, a system and method for generating a force from a voltage difference applied across at least one electrically conductive surface. The applied voltage difference creates an electric field resulting in electrostatic pressure force acting on at least one surface of an object. Asymmetries in the resulting electrostatic pressure force vectors result in a net resulting electrostatic pressure force acting on the object. The magnitude of the net resulting electrostatic pressure force is a function of the geometry of the electrically conductive surfaces, the applied voltage, and the dielectric constant of any material present in the gap between electrodes. The invention may be produced on a nanoscale using nanostructures such as carbon nanotubes. The invention may be utilized to provide a motivating force to an object. A non-limiting use case example is the use of electrostatic pressure force apparatus as a thruster to propel a spacecraft through a vacuum. So it's actually no propellant. This would be no sign of a signature when we see actual objects moving, crazy shaped objects. Maybe it's because it has something to do with the actual propulsive force. Could it be some sort of electrostatic system? If you look the way the object is shaped and where the actual electric forces build up, it creates a, a force. In this case, this would push the object to the right because you have more force on the left side of the object based on the shape. This could be why you have saucer-shaped objects or geometrically shaped UAPs. So pretty amazing. Link is in the description if you want to check out more on the abstract. So what that means is if you have an object and you can get an asymmetry, right? So you have more electrostatic charge on this side than you have on this side, it will push. You will get a force, he calls it. This would be a new force to physics and not require any propellants. That would be amazing. If you could imagine like Bob Lazar's craft, if you had some sort of fusion reactor that could create this, so this electrostatic energy, so electric charge essentially, and then you coordinate it so it works asymmetrically, then you could propel a craft with no propellant. So you'd see nothing shooting out the back, but you would see large magnetic fields. I'm assuming large electric fields is what's been reported of UAP. So could electrostatics be the actual UAP propulsion mechanism? That would be amazing. It sounds like according to Dr. Bueller, he has a patent on this. They've found it and they've, they've showed that it can be above one earth gravity so far. And he says there with Tim Ventura that he thinks it can go much further. This was just reported to News Nation. Michelle flying into LaGuardia Airport there on the right in New York captures this. So it's just five frames. But as an example, could it be using some sort of electrostatics? I mean, that's a very clear picture. Pretty impressive. She reported it to the FAA and they did not respond back to her. It's from Michelle Reyes. Only five frames there. What did you do with the video and, and, and did you reach out to authorities to, to share it with them? Um, thank you for having me. And when I realized that I had something like this on the video, the first thing I did was I emailed the FAA to let them know what I saw and maybe it was a safety hazard. Um, I reached out to them. Unfortunately, I haven't heard back from them. They didn't acknowledge my email. Um, and then I sent it to Enigma Labs and the National UFO Database. And any response? Um, Enigma Labs was the only one who responded to me. And that, so that's your how dad, apparently. Oh, okay. So and I, as I understand, your dad is a former Navy guy. So you were able to share with him as well. What did he say? Um, I, yeah, I showed it to him first and he honestly had no idea what it was either. He had no idea. He was just as baffled as I was. 
Did you guys settle on the fact that it maybe was a, a drone? It's going awfully fast to be a drone, but is that was that the best guess? He thought it may be a drone, but he didn't think that it should be where it was, that close to the aircraft. Um, so he really didn't have an answer for me. He was just as clueless as I was. He's seen a lot of things, and this he couldn't give me an answer, but if he had to guess, he would have said drone. So exciting development, and that would give an answer to UAP propulsion. It would also revolutionize space travel, because if it works in space without propellant, propellant now you can actually use these reactors, fusion reactors, fission reactors, et cetera, anything that can generate a lot of energy. And without propellant now, you can zoom around, go as fast as you like, essentially. What do you guys think of this breakthrough? Do you think it will lead us to a new age? Congrats to Tim Ventura and his APEC organization. That's amazing. I know he's been working on that for many years. So very happy to see, hopefully, a successful breakthrough from Tim Ventura. And hopefully, Dr. Bueller is correct. Thank you for being here. Please smash the like button if you did like this video. Subscribe for future content and consider supporting the channel. Patreon.com forward slash Chris Lato. It's only five bucks a month to get ad free early access. And for supporters above five bucks a month, you all get merchandise. So that Lato Files merchandise, if you do want some merchandise, there's cool mugs and shirts as well as sweatshirts, et cetera. So please consider signing up. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.